Hello and welcome to episode two of my uh, favourite game podcast. Today I'm joined by Benjamin Bloom, somewhat of a polymath on YouTube. He does a bit of music, uh, podcasts, uh, fancasts. Uh, I've known him. I've grown, uh, you know, wary of his work from his very, very detailed match analysis. After not just the team that he supports, which we'll come to in a minute, but various London teams and all sorts of stuff as well. So. Thank you for joining me today, uh, Benjamin. And can you just first of all tell me the team that you support and the story behind why you support them? Um, is is that a really nice way of saying jack of all trades, master of none? Yeah, in a way. <laughs> <Pokemon>. <laughs> um, I am an Ipswich Town fan. Um, grew up in Ipswich. Um, I was, I won't go mental, I was born in 82. So just as I was starting to like football, the Premier League started in 92 um Ipswich were obviously in the first Premier League um but I really got into it um looking 97 when they were down in the in the championship obviously if you're an Ipswich fan not interested in the Premier League at all only only championship so it took me a while so when George Burley was the manager I sort of you know and you get pocket money or whatever and you can start going so yeah that four year, four or five year period where we went around winning every week and then losing in the playoffs. Um, finally going up, um, going up at Wembley in 2000 um, and finished fifth in the Premier League and we've been paying for it for the next <laughs> 19 years. Went into administration and have been in the championship ever since. There you go. That's, yeah. the, that's the brief story of it. So you, you are... Pr- pretty much the perfect age to be a, an Ipswich fan because well bar the was it the seventies when you won the UEFA Cup? You've had you've seen the glory years really, haven't you? In I was the... born one year too late because our greatest team was nineteen eighty one, which my podcast um colleague Dave on the Blue Monday podcast will will um you know swear by it's his favourite team ever, ever, yeah. ever. The team that won the UEFA Cup finished second in the league and got to the semi-final extra time um, mm. of the of the FA Cup. But I know what you're saying. There's a lot of supporters who came after the Burley era. I mean, the Joe Royal stuff, that was good. That was good fun. I mean, obviously, we ended up losing the playoffs twice. Yeah. But um, you sort of had Darren Bent and Shefki Kuki, um, Tommy Miller, Jim Magilton. And it was just like, attack, attack. We would we'd like win six four and five two and then lose three one and you yeah. know it was all it was all good fun but yeah I guess I'm lucky if if the next seventeen years plays out the same um, as um, the previous seventeen yeah, years you might not be saying that <laughs> well there's gonna well I just feel sorry for you know I've 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 seen us play away at Inter Milan I've seen us beat Inter Milan I've yeah. seen us win at Leeds I've seen us win at Liverpool. Um, you know that season fifth, and just those few years where we just went around everywhere. Yeah. You know, eighty percent possession, loads of goals. Mm. Um, it was just fantastic. Yeah. So I, I was only ten at that time, so I was only just about getting into football and seeing a team like Ipswich, who I'd always assumed were sort of our, you know, Wolves, sort of middle of the championship, might finish in the top six. Seeing a team like that going into Europe and stuff made it me think oh maybe one day similar to like Leicester almost not quite as glamorous as and you know winning the title but still uh, you didn't that... miss Steve Bull did you D- say it again you didn't miss Steve Bull did you uh I saw I only saw him play f- a couple of times I saw oh, him score his the... last hat trick yeah oh, there you go I was yeah. going to say if you'd missed that that would be even uh, more no. unlucky but yeah. so, well as as you've already said off off camera I've seen Willy Bolly so uh, <laughs> it's okay <laughs> So let's come to Ipswich then this season. Uh, I actually predicted Ipswich to get relegated at the beginning of the season. Of course I thought, you did. Uh, not that I, <laughs> not that I hate that I haven't got anything against them at all. I just heard rumblings for a long, long time uh, that the fans were getting really annoyed at Mick McCarthy and the football was turgid and there was not much money being spent. So it seemed from the outside as if you could really struggle. But in the end... I think you had a fair season. I think you started off really well, didn't you? First handful of games, you were near the top of the table, but 15 points off the playoffs at the end of the season is not really... We we must season, have been above you for about two weeks 
I reckon. Yeah. And, and well, then that fir- uh, first you disappeared three off into the yeah. stratosphere, yeah? <laughs> yeah. The first th- three weekends, I think it was, that there was Warnock and McCarthy at the top of the table, and they were laughing that you know all these young managers have come in, but look at the two dinosaurs who are at the top. Yeah, well, uh, Nuno had the last laugh. What did you make of that, before I answer that, what did you make of that hilarious F off from Warnock to, oh. to Nuno? Wasn't that brilliant? It w- um, I, it just summed up the difference in modern football to <laughs> yeah. the past. It was, it was, and I, I was really glad that Cardiff got promoted because they are rubbish and they will finish <laughs> bottom of the Premier League without doubt next season. I think the worst thing they can do is sign a load of players because they, they've got more chance of getting, I don't know, 20 points if they keep doing all the long throw-ins and yeah. um, all of that jazz. But if they sign a load of players and, and change it all up, I, yeah. I totally agree with you. It's just I was watching that um, at home and I'm like, right, you take the sorest loser in, in the whole world of football, you put mm. him first versus second at home and yeah. you miss two penalties in the last minute. It just couldn't have been... Yeah. Any better narrative to wind up, wind up the Warnock, could it? Yeah, it's perfect, absolutely um, perfect. But no, back to our back to our season. I mean, the whole thing, you you pretty much nailed how it went. But the whole thing, all was revolving around our previous managers. Um, we tend not to say his name on our podcast now, um, <clears throat> McCarthy. Um, his contract winding down, so it was all hanging over us. And then miraculously, we won. The first five games, including a League Cup game, and I think mm. we had seven wins by the middle of um, September. Um, and that seven wins actually made it a whole lot more comfortable because yeah. as we went on, a, you know, regressed down to our normal position in the middle of the table, if they, if they hadn't have had those points and that cushion at the start, then that could have been a lot nastier. Yeah. You know, McCarthy could have gone out earlier in the season and and what have you but in the end those wins kept us in the middle and then you just had the complete pantomime of the last three months of the season where we score in the 89th minute away at Norwich to try and end the the nine-year streak McCarthy then turns around to the fans and gives it an (laughs) f off and then in some weird karmic way doesn't win the game because we concede in the 95th minute. Um, some might say he deserved it. Um, us supporters certainly didn't deserve that heartbreak. Mm. And then he says he's going to leave. And then he orchestrates this ridiculous slam in the teacup down. You know, when the, he knew when the one thing about that guy, he knows when the press are listening and he works them like yeah. absolute puppet master. Um, so, yeah, that was the story. And then like the last two months was all oh, who's going to be the new manager and, mm. you know, what are they going to do? Um, so it's going to be going to be interesting. And I know this is coming out um, uh, a week a week after yeah. we're recording it. But um, on the day of recording, we've just hired Paul Hurst from Shrewsbury. So Ipswich fans are excited now. Yeah. Well, what, what is it about him that excites you then? Because I've only been to watch Shrewsbury once this season and, and saw their playoff games. They didn't blow me away as being a particularly organised team or anything like that but you can't argue with the fact that they were favourites to go down and they've and they've done they've exceeded expectations by a long long way is that the sort of style do you think just scratching around and trying to get into the playoffs is that what you're looking for it sounds like you know more about it than I do I went to the playoff final and yeah they were they're pretty well beaten by Rotherham they got them to extra time so I Mm. don't I can't speak too much about his style all I know is he's 43 and he's got three promotions in sort of non-league and and whatnot. So um, hopefully he's a pragmatic, intelligent guy, and he looks at what he's got because there are some decent footballers at Ipswich: Emmy Hughes, uh, Waghorn, mm. Dazel, Skews. All these people can play football if they're given, you know, you're given the tools to do it. So hopefully um, it'll go that way, and not as you suggested you know more of the same pragmatic mm. championship nonsense well what's the financial situation like at, at Ipswich at the moment um I mean the owner is independently wealthy but he he got burnt basically by giving a lot of money to Roy Keane and Paul Jewell who mm. who just frankly wasted it and 
uh, since then, FFP has come in. So it's not unless you've got George Mendes, as you know, and even even Mendes had to do it in a very clever way with some loans and some yeah. stack deals. So and you can't. It did take two seasons as well. For, we had a lot of rubbish players on his books last season. Yeah, and you can't now. You can't just go and spend. I don't know, way over your turnover and and yeah. gamble on it. You can't do that anymore. So um, look, he's not. He's not going to get a load of money to spend. I mean, last summer they bought Waghorn and Hughes and Garner. And if you said to most Ipswich fans, if each year you can sign three decent enough first team players like that, it will be fine. Mm. They're never going to go and, you know, if there's people like Wolves and they've got Diogo Jota and Bolly and Neves and that lot come in, you you know, you're, you're 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 literally playing a different sport, aren't you? So yeah, there's no there's yeah. there's no chance over 46 games you can you you, you can beat them. But yeah. um, hopefully it'll be it'll be young players. The only the only way he'll get some money is if the goalie Bielkowski, who your fans will know from the game at Portman Road, because yeah, very you, very good. Yeah, you could have beat us about eight nil that yeah. day, and um, you know he's he's just excellent. So yeah, so. Oh, well, look, I'm very, very glad that we are out of the Championship because looking at it now, next season, there are so many good teams in there. Or so many big teams, I should say, not necessarily good. You look at most, I'd say, off the top of my head, about 66, two-thirds of the division have played in the Premier League. It's really tough. And the teams coming up from League One are all the ones that got relegated the season before. So that it's an incredibly tough division next year. What are you hoping for, realistically? It, we look at it though. Every, every year, it does look like that. And I, I yeah. quote the I quote the great philosopher Ian Holloway, who said, <laughs> um, "Only one team can win each game." And I, I always remember years ago Blackburn coming down, and Blackburn had won the championship, and then I mm. don't know five years later they were relegated. And you're like, "Well, they're going to get a hundred points," they, you know, and mm. doesn't doesn't always happen. It's not real football, the championship. It's just. No. It's like it's like cup football every week, isn't it? Yeah. What what I'd liken it to is is the Grand National. So normal <laughs> horse races. So but the Grand National is double the length and the fences are twice as high. It's just a it's just a freak show. Well, there's 46 games and 24 teams. It's always going to be this type of slog. And the people you mentioned, unless you get a, a Nuno, who's mm. got this excellent new system and these new players and can just work on a different level to everyone else you're always going to get people like warnock who can churn out this yeah. well if we win most of our home games by one and just you know bore get the pants yeah. off everyone else away we'll we'll finish finish top six so we'll we'll see you um you just look at the teams losing parachute money as well you know mm. that some of those are going to go into Someone will always surprise you. You know, someone like West yeah. Brom might finish 14th or something ridiculous. Yeah. Or, or they'll get 92 points and finish first. Yeah, I think there, there seems to be two ways of getting out of the championship. And it's either the way that we've done it and the way that teams have done it in the past where you throw lots of money and it and, it's, and it works. Or the sort of Huddersfield approach, which I feel that it's more likely that Ipswich will go that way in that you'll have a... Right, we're going to sign young English players, and we're going to play in this way, and it's and we'll have to be patient with it. Which I was watching your little clip from talking on Talk Sport yesterday, saying that you've only had is it sixteen managers in one hundred and forty years? Yeah. So obviously, yeah. he'll Paul get Hurst time. Now, yeah, he's going to get loads of time, and he's going to be able to play the way that he wants to play, which not many managers at the moment get the chance to do. And he should get that chance with. I, I know everyone looks from the outside, and every year they're like, "Oh, Ipswich are going to get relegated," but there's enough unless they unless there's a big fire sale and mm. Bielkowski, Chambers, Skews and Waghorn kind of all get sold and not replaced. He mm. should be comfortable enough to take Ken Locke, Downs, Dazelle, Nidham, Falami, all these young players and just just push them in and, and give them a go. And you we our friends up the road, you've seen what happens with um Madison. Mm. You know, stick him in. He's going to go for twenty million in the in the summer, yeah. and that can then, you know, regenerate you a load more money. It's it's, it's the same with Waghorn. Like you, you know what it's like in the championship. You have got guaranteed goal scorer. Mm. Some someone will pay five million, seven million for him because oh, easily. You know, so 
push them in, give them a chance, and at least you can reinvest and yeah. push your way up the table a little bit. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you about your rivalry with uh, Norwich. It seems to have got more and more heated as the as the years have gone on. I think now you're at a very level playing field. I in fact watched uh, Talk Norwich City this morning talking about how he's genuinely worried about Ipswich and how they're going to significantly overtake uh, Norwich because they, I think you finished above them for the first time in, since 2009. In 2009, yeah, yeah. This season. So how do you see the rivalry? Is it close or is, do you not really take it um, you've ex- you've explained it really well there. I, I haven't seen Jack's video yet, and um, that guy talks a talks a lot of sense. So yeah. um, he's probably nailed it on his video. The reason it's so heated at the moment is because the gap is closer than ever. After the last derby, Luke Chambers said the the 2014-15 um, playoff game between Norwich and Ipswich, they mm. they were light years ahead of us. They'd just come down from the Premier League. They yeah. had the highest paid squad in the whole division. Um, and it's like, you, you're nowhere near. And the Daniel Fark thing hasn't necessarily worked out. You know, we mm. we, we, we assume the worst when we, we see him get hired and we're like, oh, they're going to shoot right yeah. through the division. They're going to yeah. beat us twice again. But it's very, very close at the moment. And they've just finished with their parachute money. They've mm. still got people like Stephen Naismith under huge contract that they can't get Matt rid of Jarvis as well, Matt is, Jarvis as well yeah Russ Martin you know big big money and until they properly you know come down into championship finances that that legacy is going to still be there mm. uh, be interesting um the answer to the question about how seriously do you take it the the, the fans are hilarious it's probably like uh, you know in the Midlands with Wolves and mm. West Brom and, and Birmingham um, they pretend it doesn't matter strategically when something bad happens, but when something good happens, it, it really matters. Yeah. So I'm not going to lie. When when we conceded that goal in the 95th minute, I'm you know I had my little pad for my match reports. I was just stunned, just completely mm. like I cannot believe this has happened. We just cannot beat Norwich for love nor money. Mm. But um, maybe next season the the finishing above them is is great because at least it ends that that streak where you know they've been in yeah. the Premier League three seasons yeah. since we last yeah. finished above them so yeah what is it like being an Ipswich fan at the moment because just was this is was next season going to be a 17th consecutive season in the championship is that right I think it's or, the or 18th this... isn't it I think this one I, was I can't, the... I can't remember whether it has been 17 no or you're right is, yeah. you're right I'm just trying to think because the Norwich fans would sing 15 years in the championship that was two seasons ago and Yes, it's going to be seven. Oh, I can't even. I can't even think. <laughs> when did we get lot, relegated? Well, two thousand and one, look... two thousand and two. We got relegated. Right. So if you look at the rest of the rest of the championship, every single team, I think, apart from I could like, be wrong. The... For... no, Forest have been down. Well, yeah, Forest have... have been down. Derby have been Derby, there. Derby have time, been promoted. Uh, two thousand seven, eight. So they're probably the longest. As well as you, yeah. Is there part of you that would take relegation to just go and see some different grounds and see, <laughs> see some, something different? Some people, some people say, yeah, that would, you know, go and get. And talking to Jack from Norwich as well, I don't want to make this all about Norwich, but they they went down, um, mm. got Paul Lambert, got a load of players they loved, and went through the two divisions straight into the Premier League. I know that doesn't, but I remember Man City doing it um, with Joe we, Royal. We've and, done it. We've yeah, done it and, it, and genuine, and I know Leeds fans who would say the same. Watford uh, did it under Graham it, Taylor the second time as well. Yeah, it was ge- it was genuinely the most enjoyable season that I've ever had as a Wolves fan because you'd go to all these away grounds like Warsaw and Port Vale and whatever, and you'd have half the ground <laughs> full of Wolves fans. Good for and the it, ego, and, yeah. Yeah, and then you'd have all the other teams would come to your ground. They'd be taking pictures like that of the, of the ground because they've never been to somewhere so and big. You've and beaten you're thinking, them before they've even got out of the tunnel, haven't you? They're yeah. like, oh my god, I've never seen a ground yeah. this big. Yeah, I I loved it, and then because of course we did so well. I think if you do go down and you really struggle, like Sunderland, I I think they've they've changed in the right things at the right time now. I think. You know, but anyway, I don't don't get me wrong. <laughs> Look, three seasons ago, uh, or they're fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, we finished in the playoffs, and no one would have been saying, um, you know, oh, we need to go down to to have some yeah. fun. It just depends. I think it had just gone very, very stale. We'd finished mm. in the playoffs, then we finished seventh, then we finished sixteenth, and then we finished 
12th again and you're like mm. where's this going but hopefully the new manager will yeah. maybe put the fun back into it a little bit yeah I think it was quite a tragic sight I can't remember when it was back in I think it was just before you played Norwich so it must have been about February where was it 13,000 or something like that in the ground there's, awful, a, awful. there's a few times it went down to 13,000 because we we started the season and the the alarm number was 15,000 and we mm. thought you know, this could if this gets worse, this could go below fifteen thousand, and all of a sudden, like you say, it's worth thirteen thousand. And a lot of people, by the way, um, think that that number's a load of rubbish anyway. That they've counted all the season tickets. And yeah. there's two particular games, um, both on Tuesday nights, Hull and Barnsley on weekday evenings, where you know those guys can't get down and, and go to yeah. work the next day from Hull or whatever, so they only bring three hundred supporters or what have you um Mm. because it's miles um and a lot of people would argue that there were a lot less than thirteen thousand in there so yeah well i went to portman road for the first time this season it just it see it just felt like a club that has got such potential but the ground and everything just needs a big shake up a big clean especially that away end ground is very very tired very tired i've never been in such a tight away end all the Mm. seats and stuff is not as modern as it should be in the well if you if you look now since and you look at the championship clubs in places like the you know the Reebok or the Macron or whatever it's called and Pride Pride Park they're all 15 years old now and these are considered modern grounds and Ipswich hasn't Mm -hmm. changed you know and you go to Derby and there's heaters above the thing and you can get out the exit really clearly and the one thing I'm a absolutely anal for is a good view of the the game and in Portman Road, you're, you know, you're, I'm, I'm sounding really pretentious now. Your knees should be at the next person's head with the, yeah. but Portman Road, if you're five feet eight like me and you get a tall bloke in front of you, you don't see a lot of the game even. It's that, yeah. it's that old. So I, that, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Right. So moving on then, you've mentioned it a couple of minutes ago about your, you making notes on the games during the game. I've never watched anybody on YouTube who can analyse a game so meticulously. Oh, thank you. Video, very kind. Vi- yeah. <laughs> videos are like 15 to 20 minutes long, but that's because you literally you talk about every single thing on the game. So I imagine, do you get a lot of people from abroad watching your videos and, and commenting on how they don't need to be at the games anymore because <laughs> of the way? <laughs> that's very, it's very flattering. Um, I just found that I, I think in the hierarchy of how horrible people are to you on the internet... I think YouTube's the worst. I think people can be really, really mean on YouTube. You probably know yourself. And I just yeah. found out that if I made a mistake, people were very, very critical and very... So I started to write everything mm. down. And then I got lovely comments like from yourself. Oh, yeah, I I agree. You, 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 you nailed it. And mm. all of a sudden, I'm like... And then you get a bit paranoid about it. You're like, well, <laughs> I need to get this right. And you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're on who scored to find out did... did did Matt Doherty really nod that? Did yeah, who was the assist? Yeah. You know, I need to get yeah. this right. So it was just a case of wanting to get it right. But yeah, the I get criticised sometimes that they're too long, but they always seem to come in at about 15, 15 mm. minutes. I don't. I tr- I try not to. I only write down when there's a chance on goal. That's mm. that's it. But this is the championship, isn't it? It's <laughs> you know you can't go three minutes without someone getting yeah. a corner or a chance on goal but yeah that's that's become that's become my thing I can't compete with these 17 year olds doing the match experiences or whatever no, my, no. my audience is more you know discerning they want to know about the systems and how the game was won and yeah. you know when your manager you know because your games were great to analyze because you had this incredible system that could be both really attacking and then really defensive at yeah. the at the same yeah. time and I, I was just fascinated to see him snap his fingers at half time he's like mm. five four one you're not scoring we're, yeah. we're done thanks for our three <laughs> points you know and yeah. and people like that sort of stuff yeah i think i found that as well because all i do is much much shorter i can't go into as much detail as you do but i i've i have tried to make notes and stuff during the game but i, I find that it distracts me too much and you obviously uh, have you got any like journalist background i have actually that? yeah i mean i trained as a journalist years and years ago and then got into doing all the music stuff but mm. i don't to be honest i don't really i don't really use any journalistic integrity i've just i just like yourself i just watch loads of football matches and yeah. you know you you look you look at it sometimes and you go oh 10 minutes time he's gonna do 
he's going to do that. And when you've had the same manager for six years, you know you know what the subs are going to be, you know what yeah. the system's going to be. Um, so then you start looking strongly at the other team and mm. call me a complete nerd. I find it, I find it fun. Yeah, trying to figure yeah. out what the what the managers are, are, are trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you've been quite complimentary about our team so far. Great team. Yeah. Are there any other teams that you've seen this season who have impressed you? Oh God, loads. Um, I mean, I had a bit of a a few love affairs. One was with with Wolves because the for for the channel, the first time I went to a game that was Ipswich was Wolves. I went to Wolves Sheffield Wednesday away, and it really worked. I got tons of views for the video, and that was one particular game where Neves was silly, cool. you know. Yeah. No, but he was. Goal. He was imperious, you know. He he, yeah. he played like Jan Mulby used to for Liverpool, and he just <laughs> ran the game, you know. Yeah. Um, so I loved the way, I loved the influence that you see the amount of teams that started doing the three four, three four three after mm. Nuno did it. So Wolves, Millwall. I I'm down here in London, Colney. Go down to Millwall, and I know they've got a reputation, but the second or third time I went down. You know, you get this, all right, no Ipswich in here. And they were absolutely lovely to me. And they were like, you're doing a video today, mate. You're going to wear a stupid jumper. And, you know, all of a sudden you're getting loads and loads of loads of, um, loads of of nice comments and thumbs up. And the, the thing I enjoyed about going to Millwall is that Ipswich was so defensive, pragmatic and grumpy. And Millwall mm. didn't care. They just attacked everybody. They played direct, yeah. but they just attacked. And at Fulham, the, the combination of... Kenny, the deep line playmaker, McDonald, the holding guy, and Johansson, mm. the box to box. Just love that that centre yeah. mid centre midfield. You know, yeah. I know you guys played in a different way with um, with the two. A lot of it going down the sides, but that yeah. that centre midfield from Fulham was a joy to watch. Yeah, they they're definitely two teams that in our little run in where we started to have a bit of a shake around about uh, March time when we lost to Villa. I was very, very glad that we'd already played both Fulham and Millwall because they were just getting better and better. And I, I still can't believe now that Fulham had to go through the playoffs. The way I know, that but that's the, that's the championship. It's, it's, a freak, yeah. it's a freak show. And we, we had it under Burley where everyone said, you're the best team we played all season. But, you know, Grimsby would come and beat us and Crew would come and beat us and, <laughs> and we'd have to go have to go through the, the playoffs. That's, that's the way it is. It, by the way, it annoyed me as well when um, everyone was like, oh, Wolves are going to throw it away. They lost mm. two games, both away at the two form teams in the division. And yeah. it's like, oh, Wolves well, are throwing they... it away. It's like, no, they're not. Have you seen <laughs> well, them the play? Re- <laughs> it was it was mainly Wolves fans who were saying that because we'd seen it uh, 2001, 2002. We were, I think it was 15 points clear, 16 Dave points Jones, clear. Dave Jones, yeah. Dave Jones, yeah. Of, we were clear of West Brom who were in third. And we threw that away with something like 10 games to go. So we were still ultra cautious. Even when we were just relying on Fulham to drop points against Brentford, we still thought, well, they'll win that and then we'll go and lose to Blues and then things will unravel from there. But, so, it, but come on, it was Champions League players, wasn't it? Diogo oh, yeah, Jota yeah. and Bolly and Neves. It's just yeah. leagues yeah. leagues above everybody else. Yeah. In, in hindsight, it was ridiculous that we were worrying at all. But there's still... we. We've seen. Oh it no, it's the, we've seen. It. <laughs> yeah, that we just mentioned. I saw my team take the lead away at Norwich in the 89th minute and still not win. So yeah. you know, it's it's football, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Is there one particular game that stands out from this season that was the most entertaining or um, anything? Well, Ipswich won four three away at Millwall. That was that was crazy, stupid, mm. uh, stupid fun. Um, I loved watching. I hadn't seen you guys. I'm not just buttering you up. I loved watching Bolly and Neves. I was yeah. especially Bolly, where it's like, what are you doing? You know, you're 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 putting in about twenty percent effort, and yeah. you you haven't sweated all season, have you? That's what scares me because he in the Premier League will have have to actually try. He's going to be amazing. But I looked him up. I was I was expecting him to be about thirty six. I was like, no, no you can't, five, you can't be that, you can't be that switched on. And and I looked him up, and he's like twenty five or twenty six yeah. or something. Um, well, apparently, so, he he cannot concentrate. Apparently, Conor Cody was said in an interview that constantly he's just like staring off into the crowd. And it's too, it's too easy. Con- it's too easy for him though. Yeah, it's the, yeah. That, that's what it is. I mean, we had. Titus Bramble, who needed Tony Mowbray next to him, telling him what to do. Um, yeah, though some of those games, you have to understand. That, I mean, it was fun going to Leeds. We lost three-two away at Leeds, and seeing Leeds completely, completely 
full up and mm. uh, but it wasn't that entertaining watching watching Ipswich this season. Um, we yeah. did after the previous manager had left. We beat Reading four nil away at the end, but that didn't involve us playing a major. That involved a Reading complete mental mental breakdown at the end of the game, yeah. and they just probably the four three at at Millwall, especially given how well Millwall went on to went on to do. That was a bit of a mm. crazy weird game. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what sort of hopes have you got for your YouTube channel now in the in the future? Do you, are you hoping that it's going to become a bigger thing or a, a path towards journalism again, or just still enjoyment? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the the truth is, I never had any plans to do it. We um we got the the Blue Monday podcast, which it was just an audio show, and I'm I'm looking around and like, how can we further the 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 content and that was just one audio show a week and we saw all these all this stuff on youtube um so i put an ad out i said does anyone want to come youtube for us and this really lovely lad he, he phones me up he says i'll do it and i'm like great and we got it sorted and then about a week before the season he phones up again he's like um, i i don't really want to do it i do, you know i mm. I, I don't want my and so I'm like, okay fine you know no problems thanks for being honest and we had a friendly away at Charlton at the start of the season, a week before the season. So I went along to the friendly. Is that the one that you lost 6-0 or something like that? And we lost, we lost 6-1. So I think I got really lucky because I did one video and it was on a game that we lost 6-1 that was an absolute train wreck and there were hardly any Ipswich fans there because right. it was an away friendly. So all mm. of a sudden I put this video up and it like the first video got 2,000 views or something. So I'm like, oh, mm. okay, I, I know how much the podcast does and that's that's good so yeah just just built on it from there i'm i'm quite keen to to do more non-ipswich games as well try and get to as many as i can and make it more um i'd love to go to a lot more i'd love to go to the sheffield derby i'd love to get you you know but um you know i'm i'm 35 years old I've, i've got a job i've got a car i've you know i'm i'm perfectly settled it's just a hobby if yeah look if if I do it for for another year and the views suddenly go up and it's ten thousand views every mm. every episode instead of two thousand three thousand views, then yeah. then you take probably the same as yourself. You you yeah. you take a view and you think, oh, hang on, if I now put a bit more time into this, I might make a a bit yeah. more money. So well, that's it. I, I'm interested to see now what happens when it's not. Burton Albion that I'm talking about that it's Chelsea and it's Man City and Man United every week well that hopefully that will be a, audience then, a yeah. much bigger audience for you if you can start drawing in and that's a little bit the problem with Ipswich you've already mentioned it as well and uh, you know I don't watch football just to you know just to count and collect views I am an mm. I am an Ipswich fan but you know you've got a diminishing fan base of a team that's been in their championship 17 years and like mm. I said I go to a uh, Wolves Wolves Sheffield Wednesday and Wolves are top of the league they're packing out the away end and you know all of a sudden lots of people wanted to watch that and it's all it's all Wolves fans because they're yeah. you know because they're top of the league and they're having a great time watching football yeah yeah right I, I just want to ask you now I don't know a lot about your music but I've seen little clips of you performing with uh the bloke who's off EastEnders What's it's Shane name? Ritchie yeah Shane Ritchie any other highlights any other top performers you've d- um with? Yeah, so uh, long story. I I was in a ba- I was in a signed band in my twenties. I you know kind of ditched football a little bit then and mm. did all of that. Um, and that band did pretty well. We opened up opened up at V and Foo Fighters played after oh. us. So we passed Foo Fighters <laughs> on the on the way um, on the way to stage. Um, I did yeah. a solo thing for a while. Um, I played with Florence and the Machine. I played with played with sparks um various people over over the you know you when you're in that circuit everyone mm. meets everybody and everybody's played with everybody um the, the ridiculous one was i did a gig in chelmsford a solo gig with ed sheeran um probably six months before ed got signed because he's from framlingham he's an ipswich fan actually mm. and um yes, yeah. yeah i messaged him on myspace and i said look we need an opener for this gig and he's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll come and play. And he needed to go off somewhere else. And I remember mm. saying to the promoter, "Look, put him on after me. I'm, I'm not going on. I'm not going on after him. He's ridiculous." Mm. Um, so I swear to God, this will sound like um, narrative um, exaggeration. He played six tracks from his first album that's probably sold 
four million copies or something now to Chelms in Chelmsford to ten people, right. um, and bless him, he watched my entire set. Um, Did he? Yeah, obviously I'm not quite as good a songwriter as Ed is. But... Imagine if you'd if you'd have gone on second. Look what could have been. <laughs> well, there you go. I think I think there's um, songwriter. I think it's his songwriting ability and his ability to connect to the wider audience. But yeah, I work I work with um, with Shane, who's just gone back to EastEnders. So he's he's making loads of money out of TV, but he does. Um, he does uh, gigs, and when he does gigs, I'm I'm booked to to play with him. I do some solo stuff in um, yeah. in London, in Camden, every Wednesday and Thursday. So I keep my I keep my music um, mm. going, but I'm not I'm not 21 anymore. I can't do eight late nights in a <laughs> in a row. So just pay the bills and and get home yeah. now. Yeah. Great, right. You've alluded to this game now. We're going to have a little quick quiz. You said you watched Ipswich beat Inter Milan. Oh, back, okay. Back in... Uh, what, it says 2001, November, 2002? November, November 2001, it says. Now, what, the, it's the same quiz for everybody, but I pick a game which I think you would have been to or a particularly memorable game. So your game is this game. Can you name the Ipswich starting eleven from this game? Right. Was Alan Armstrong a substitute? I think he was a sub. Because he scored the goal. Um, Christ. It, did, how many guesses do I get? Am I out if I get one yeah. wrong? No, no. no I'm not, okay, I'm not Matt Holland. Too horrible. Yes. Um, Sixto Peralta. Yes. Uh, Christ. Bramble have gone by then. Uh, John McGreal. Uh, he was on the bench. Matteo Serrani in goal. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Clapham. Yeah. Who put that cross in for Armstrong? Was Marcus Stewart playing or was he injured? I think he was injured, wasn't he? Um, he was not on him. Tommy Miller. No. Did we not sign no. him until he came down? Um, Mark Venus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say Bramble. Had he gone? Yeah. He is no, there? He was there. Um, who yeah. would have played right back? Chris Makin? Uh, yeah. How many do I need? You've got seven so far. Oh, seven that's not four. bad, is it? Did that's I say good. Martin Russo? Uh, no, but he was on the bench. Oh, Christ. Um, Clarence Sadorf played for Inter. And yeah. did Christian Vieri? Who was that guy? Uh, the Recoba play as well. They had some ridiculous players. The, the Seedorf played. I can't see Vieri on Matarazzi. here. Matarazzi? Matarazzi was on the bench. Wow. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, go on. Help help me out with these. Give me a clue for the remaining Ipswich players. Uh, right. Fabian Wilness? Uh, on the bench. Oh, my God. Why are they all on the bench? This is why we got relegated. He took all the players <laughs> that, you know, that, that got him there and stuck them all on the bench, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I don't know these players. Give me, give me initials. Go on. Well, again, they've only got surnames. Oh, Christ. Uh, one of them used to be the same name as a player who played left back for us <laughs> in the late 90s, whose first name was Lee, who went on to play Oh, Richard Celtic. Naylor. Richard yes. Naylor, yeah. I was going to say Neil Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Naylor. Um, no, go on. Tell me the rest of them. Uh, right, so I haven't disgraced s- myself. No, you've done eight, eight out of eleven. Is not bad. So, Serenian goal, making Bramble, Herideson. Oh my God, that's pathetic. I've got to get that, haven't I? Yes. Uh, Venus, Wright, Holland, Peralta, Clapham, Cunago. Oh, Cunago, yeah, he Cunago. would have been the other forward. And Naylor. Then on the bench is Branigan, Wilness, McGreal, Bent, Royser, Armstrong. God, God, so they played for West Brom, so you wouldn't like him, yeah. Yes, that's what, yeah. And then the Inter Milan team, we had Toldo. <laughs> this Javier is ridiculous, Z- isn't it? <laughs> Javier Zanetti, Cord- Cordoba. Cordoba. Yeah, he was a Colombian centre half, I think, yeah. Yeah. Di Biagio. Di Biagio Gresco- missed a penalty in the Euros for Italy, yeah. Gresco, Seidorf, Cristiano Zanetti, Emre, Farinos, Calon, Ventola. Nicola Ventola, what a player he was as well. God, in the return game, Christian Vieri scored a hat trick in the San Siro. Bramble was marking mm. Vieri, that, that didn't work <laughs> out well. And at the end, um, original Ronaldo, uh, El Finomino, 
came on for the last 10 minutes. It was one of his injury comebacks after he blew his knee out. I saw original Ronaldo play against Ipswich. That's, that's something. That's a very, very good claim. There you go. I saw a seventeen-year-old or eighteen-year-old uh, Cristiano Ronaldo playing against Wolves, and we we'll beat them. <laughs> isn't, so. isn't it weird how you have to um, how you have to differentiate the two so, two yeah. such amazing players, and you have to like yeah. oh original Ronaldo. You see, I think one should be called Cristiano, and the other one should just be right. He should have Ronaldo. dibs on Ronaldo because he was a ridiculous yeah. player, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's uh, mate. Like I can't believe. Like even reading it now, Inter Milan nil, Wolf, uh, Wolves. If only Ipswich won. And you get these yeah. get these constant tweets come out. These quiz questions. Ipswich is the only unbeaten home team in English football. Their record is like I think they played thirty one and they've never lost a home European game. Really? Yeah. So maybe now in the, in the current format because this was straight knockout, wasn't it? This was you UEFA Cup. After, yeah, after yeah. This, yeah. So now in the group stage and stuff like that, maybe you would do a little bit better, get a bit further. Well, we'd lose our definitely lose our unbeaten <laughs> unbeaten record. But come on, Ipswich in Europe behave. Yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, Ben, thanks very much for coming on. It's been uh, really interesting talking to you, and uh, all the best for Ipswich next season in the future, and hopefully under is it Paul Hurst? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they'll uh, be back to these glory days soon. Um, Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much.